top commanders say Russian forces are increasing their attacks on Bakhmut as the Ukrainian military remains determined to keep Russia from capturing the city by Tuesday when Moscow holds its World War II Victory Day parade. Now, Ukraine says Russia is doing everything possible to take Bakhmut, including sending in more forces. And those forces include Wagner fighters. Just days ago, the head of the Russian mercenary group had threatened to pull his men out of the fight because of a lack of ammunition. He now claims his fighters are advancing in Bakhmut as they wait for more supplies. CNN's Sam Kiley has our update now from Kyiv. Fighting continues to be bloody and merciless in the east of the country, in particular around the city of Bakhmut, where the Ukrainians have suggested that it's possible that the Wagner Group or elements supporting the Wagner Group have even been using incendiary devices in that battle. This coming as the leader of the mercenary organization has backtracked on his threat to leave the city and hand over to Chechen fighters. This is very much part of an ongoing soap opera, effectively, uh, led by Mr. Progozin, who has uh, been tweeting and making public statements uh, since effectively the beginning of this war, highly critical of the Kremlin and particularly the Russian Ministry of Defense. He now says that he is getting the ammunition that he needs, so he won't be pulling his troops out uh, for the foreseeable future. But all eyes really are on where and when or even if the Ukrainians are going to be launching a summer offensive. There have been mass troop movements. There is a lot of talk from the Ukrainians about an offensive, but no real signs yet on the ground that anything is especially imminent. Sam Kiley, CNN in Kyiv. Joining me now from Washington, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel and CNN military analyst Cedric Layton. Um, good to have you weigh in on these issues. We've had quite a few days. The Wagner Group leader, he made those dramatic threats to pull out of Bakhmut. Turned out it was quite a performance, right? It looks like his troops are staying put. Now, does this incident give you any insight into what's going on with either the Wagner Group or, or the Ru Russian military? Well, Paula, I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the battle of the tantrums, if you will. And in this particular case, Prigozhin's tantrum uh, seems to have won the day for him. In other words, he gets to get uh, weapons and ammunition, uh, gets a resupply line to, an, uh, you know, his troops in Bakhmut that didn't uh, appear to have uh, that good of a resupply line. And uh, he gets to stay in that uh, horrible meat grinder. So in some ways, you know, it might, uh, you know, be considered a victory for Prigozhin. But in other ways, it's a Pyrrhic victory because, uh, you know, staying in that meat grinder, it doesn't do anybody any favors, and least of all him. Yeah, but there seem when I say that it's a, perfor a performance, uh, I'm, you know, not trying to be trite. It, it seemed that mm -hmm. it was a message to someone, and yet if you think all he wanted from that was ammunition, well, that would be pretty naive to think that. It was clearly some kind of propaganda purpose. It, absolutely. Well, there's propaganda and there's a power struggle going on, Paula. And uh, what this basically means to me is that uh, Prigozhin, uh, let it be known, uh, that he has a, a military element that could be withdrawn and could potentially put at risk uh, Russia's uh, front line. Uh, and if that front line had collapsed, that would have been a calamity for the Russian forces. Uh, so what uh, Prigozhin is doing is he's flexing his muscles in a way. Uh, he is, you know, in a, in a position where he can, uh, in essence, complain uh, and mm. make sure that uh, he gets uh, what he wants in this particular case. But he is basically vying for as much power as he can possibly get. Right. Um, and, and that gives us, turn, turns our attention now to Ukraine's uh, counteroffensive. It could start as early as this week. Do you think expectations are too high at this point, especially if what Ukraine is looking for is a decisive blow to the Russian military in this war? Yeah, if you're going to mount a decisive blow in an operation like this or in a conflict like this, uh, there's got to be an element of surprise here. And, uh, you know, right now it seems to me at least that uh, we have telegraphed way too much. The Ukrainians have telegraphed way too much. The West has telegraphed way too much that this offensive is going to happen. Uh, and uh, the only thing that's missing are the specific details as to time and place. Uh, but we believe it's going to happen this week. We believe it's going to happen uh, probably in the South. 
uh, and we believe it's going to affect uh, the approaches to Crimea. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, a major area that shouldn't be a big surprise to the Russians. Uh, but if the Ukrainians have learned uh, mobility warfare, if they've learned combined arms operations, uh, putting all the elements of the military force together in a coordinated fashion, uh, then they could still achieve some successes, but they won't be as dramatic as they would have been had there been the element of surprise. Yeah, it's such a good point, right? We've been talking about this for months, it seems now. And I have to ask you, strategically, the U.S., the Allies, have they given Ukraine enough capability at this point, and has it arrived in time? Well, it's mixed. Uh, you know, the verdict on that is definitely mixed. I think uh, that some of the capabilities, such as the Patriot missile system, which uh, reportedly has shot down a Kinshal hypersonic missile, uh, that's a major plus for the Ukrainians. However, there are only going to be two batteries, two Patriot batteries in Ukraine. Uh, they will need far more than that in order to mount an effective uh, air defense and missile defense for their country. Uh, the other thing that, uh, of course, is missing is required quantity of tanks and, of course, aircraft. Uh, the Ukrainians want the F-16. They're not getting the F-16 until after all of this is done, if at all. And that, of course, will provide them, uh, you know, with a, a significant uh, lack of capability at this particular point, and that could have a significant impact on their ability to perform. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the blowback is from Ukraine if and when that happens. Uh, again, some pivotal months ahead for sure as the weather warms up in Ukraine. Retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And what's the latest on the strikes, uh, Nick, and the presence of Russian forces in Bakhmut as well? Some question about that in the weekend. Yes, uh, certainly the Eastern Front uh, continues to be very active. Where we're standing here, we can hear the sounds of artillery quite clearly uh, in the distance here. So the East is very active. And of course, uh, particularly in Bakhmut, U Ukrainian officials and military are concerned about the potential of a Russian push at the last minute to try to take control of it completely before those victory day parades in Moscow on, uh, on, t on, the, on the 9th of May tomorrow. So there is, if you will, perhaps a little more tension along the front lines in the east about Russian, Russia's intent. But of course, all of that will be, uh, will be valuable information for the Ukrainians so that they can sort of determine if the Russians make a big last minute push for Bakhmut. Um, how strong is it? What, 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 where are their strengths? Where are their weaknesses? Um, along the southern front, um, again, the, the much expected possible uh, um, offensive uh, that the government officials sometimes call a military campaign here. Um, that Russian expectation is that that's perhaps going to get underway sometime soon. No indication from Ukrainian officials about when or where that may start. But the strikes on Kyiv, significant perhaps in their number, 35 drones, that was a significant number, significant for the Ukrainians that they were able to shoot them all down. And um, some missiles uh, getting through uh, in Odessa. Again, it's Kyiv that seems to have the strongest air defenses. We've heard Ukrainian officials say that they think that recently Russia has been testing their air defenses to see where their weaknesses could be. But in the east where we are, very distinctive heavy shelling continue, continuing. Okay, Nick, in the East, thank you. And Claire, we mm. have Russia's Victory Day coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The propaganda parallels for Russia are quite strong because this was marking 1945, yeah. the Soviet defeat of the Nazis, and they've been alleging the pretext for their invasion of Ukraine were, were Nazi elements and a new kind of fascism right. in Ukraine. Given that it's so many months on and Russia still hasn't got the decisive victory it promised at the beginning, what's the importance of this in terms of morale and propaganda in the country? So Victory Day, I mean, you just cannot overstate its importance in Russia. It is probably the biggest day of the year. It used to be, by the way, something that Russia marked in conjunction with the West. Of course, they fought together against Nazi Germany. I was there in 2005. That ages me a little bit. But um, that was when the US president at the time, George W. Bush, also attended. It was the 60th anniversary. 2010, Western troops even marched alongside Russian troops uh, in that parade in Moscow. So we see, obviously, in play the complete destruction of Russia's relations with the West. No foreign leaders there. But I think really significant this year uh, is that there's been some scaling back of the Victory Day parade. We've seen a lot of regions, particularly the, the ones closest to Ukraine, uh, either cancelling parades or removing some elements, things like fireworks displays. 
citing security concerns in some cases, others citing proximity to Ukraine. One in particular region said that they didn't have military units or equipment. Uh, so that is potentially telling. And I think this is just one more way in which this war uh, is really hitting home and hitting where it hurts, because this is of huge patriotic importance to Russians. Guy Sebastian, thank you so much.